Hi everyone. So welcome to Chandu's TechNet. Today we will discuss, uh, you know, so the overview of high availability and disaster recovery solutions available for SQL Server, right? So yeah, let's before uh, jump into uh, high availability and disaster recovery solutions that we have, let's understand few uh, technologies uh, before we uh, understand the high availability technologies that we have, right? So the terminologies would be RPO, so RTO, quorum, what we have, uh, so SLA as well. So there is a separate video for all covering all these three, RPO, RTO, and SLA. So you can go through that for detailed, uh, you know, so the information, uh, what these three are. But here in this video, so I will give an outline or a high level overview. So what is these uh, four uh, technologies and why that is required to understand and configure any high availability technologies, right? So what is high availability? So high availability is nothing but, so make sure that the databases that we configure is available all the time, right? So that is the main uh, concept of high availability. Right. So why we need high availability, by the way, either way, like high availability or disaster recovery, why we need. So it's all maintain the application available. Right. So, for example, let's take an example of IRCTC. Right. So any application you consider. So IRCTC or any, you know, so aid lines or any uh, travel insurance. So you consider any applications needs or uh, should have all the time online. Or for example, you go to any bank or ATM, right? So for example, if you do a day-to-day -day transactions in your ATM or bank, so what if the database is not available? So if the database is not available, your application would be down. So what if your application is down? So what happens to the transactions that you are doing? in your day-to-day -day, uh, life, right? So the transactions will be, uh, you know, so uh, delayed or the standard transactions will fail, right? So that impacts that business, that impacts, uh, you know, so the uh, bank's revenue and it impacts to the users as well. To maintain uh, that consistency or to maintain, uh, you know, so without any issue, so we should have, such solution like high availability and disaster recovery solutions, right? So let's understand what is this RPO, RTO, and how SLA is depends on RPO and RTO. So what is SLA? SLA is a service level agreement. For example, let's say this is a bank, right? So bank, so you consider anything like, you know, so this is just, just taking an example as bank or any any kind of you know so aid lines or any organization any application so you consider anything right let's say this is a bank application right so this is a bank application so this is where the organization or a team is maintaining this bank database right so xyz is an organization company so maintaining this bank database, right? It has a bank DB, okay? So you have your, uh, so this company maintaining or supporting, providing service to the bank database, right? So then what will happen if this database is not accessible? Right. So if the database is not accessible, then your bank application is down. Right. So if this is not accessible, it's not accessible, then your application will be down. Obviously, right. If the database is not available, then your application is down. So if application is down, then you will have to use 
uh, loss in terms of revenue, in terms of, um, you know, so user impacted and everything will be, you know, so kind of an issue at the application or bank or ATM, wherever we go, right? So what is SLA? This company, whatever, whoever managing databases will give a guarantee or give a signed uh, agreement between this company and the client. So you can consider bank as a client, right? So there is an agreement between this XYZ company and the, and the client stating that if there is any issues at the database, right? If there is any issues at the database, I will make sure or our company will make sure that your databases, your application will be online within whatever you know so time frame let's say for example one hour just just an example let's say within one hour i will bring your application online if there is any issues at the database level or this is just a one hour is very huge right like if if one hour is not accessible then it's a it's a very huge it is a oltp online transactional processing application any any banks right so if one hour your bank is down your application bank application is down you will you know so end up uh, having so many issues because you would not get money from the atm there won't be any transactions happens there are many customers impacted it's it's a very huge loss right so that is the reason we have something called high availability and disaster recovery right so to configure high availability and disaster recovery so a company xyz company will give an agreement to the bank that if any issues max to max we get with minimum amount of time so we'll bring the application with minimum amount of time so it is possible right so that is where these two concepts are came into the picture right so SLA what is SLA SLA you can consider an agreement between the company and the client stating that if there is any issues at your uh, application then I will make sure so I will make sure uh, to fix the issue within a span of time so it can be anything the time can be as fast as possible to it depends on the issue, right? So I, if I say that five minutes, I can res resolve that issue. So it all depends on the issue. Like I might be able to resolve issue in five minutes. I might not be able to issue this. I might not be able to resolve the issue in five minutes, but make sure that we provide a transparent or immediate response to the application team stating that I am looking into that. Right. So this XYZ company will will tell or, uh, you know, so inform to the client that boss, I am looking into your issue. Don't worry. So I will fix as soon as possible or I'll fix that issue, uh, you know, so as early as possible. Right. So that is kind of SLA. That is called SLA, service level agreement between company and the client. Right. So why, what is this RPO and RTO? Right. So RPO stands for recovery point objective right so recovery point objective and rto stands for recovery time objective right so what does it mean let's understand what is rto recovery time objective is in short it tells that what is your application downtime so how much downtime right so how much downtime it tells it gives application it tells that application that for example something happened here on this database so how much time it takes to bring the application online right that is the simple terminology the recovery time objective for example this is down at 10 o'clock 10 a.m application is down down right so if application is down at 10 a.m 10 10 so the xyz company support team or dba team brought the database online right so online application online db or application online 
at 10 10 so here what is my recovery time is 10 minutes 10 minutes so this is equal to recovery time objective this 10 minutes is the rtvo recovery time objective right so 10 minutes your application is down that is what it is telling that how much time the application is down right what is rpo right so recovery point objective so what is recovery point objective is for example 10 am so i have 100 um, you know so you can consider 100 transactions is running on the database for example let's consider that so 10 am the application is down right or, or other way like i'll tell you for example okay for example 10 am i have 10 gb of data right so 10 am i have 10 gb of data in my database right so my database is uh, not available at 10 5 am down database is down or database is not accessible okay so database is not accessible now i brought the database online at 10 15 okay so 10 15 i brought the database online right so here if we have this 10 gb of data right so after before before um, you know so crash or before before crash i would say like crash crash is nothing but it can be anything like database is not accessible database is down database is corrupted it can be anything right so before crash the database is 10 gb right so then 10 5 your database is not accessible something happened crash happened at 10 5 and 10 15 database is online all right so when the database is online so what is the data which is available let's say for example after 10 15 i'm able to get 9 gb of data right so i'm able to recover we call this as a recovery right so i'm able to recover 9 gb of data right so if i recover 9 gb of data so what is the loss here before crash and after cra uh, before crash and after crash so how much data we are able to recover 9 gb we recovered and 1 gb is loss right so 1 gb data loss this 1 gb data loss we call it as rpo recovery point objective right in simple words till what time we like how much data loss we can sustain if there is a crash happens right so how much data loss 1 gb data loss when uh, to recover after failure right so rpo is how much data loss we uh, how much data loss we can sustain after the database recovered from the crash right so that is what we call it as a rpo recovery point objective is tell that how much data loss you can sustain rto tells that how much time it takes to recover right here in the same scenario 1 gb data loss he called rpo recovery point objective i mean a uh, uh, recovery point object as in like 9 gb we were able to recover 1 gb loss like so here so recovery rpo tells that 1 gb i loss you know so because of this crash and the rto is 10 minutes recovery time right how much time it takes to bring the databases online it tells that 10 minutes it takes to bring the database online this is rpo and rto so based on these two the SLA is depends, right? So now here, the SLA, what is SLA? The SLA is 10 minutes. I'm able to recover the database within 10 minutes, including the data loss is 1 GB. 
loss right if these two comes under the sle service level agreement right so what is your rpo what is your rto is equal to your service level agreement right so to maintain this to reduce this issue right to reduce the downtime to reduce the data loss we have one or more high availability and disaster recovery solutions that we are going to discuss now so another terminology is quorum so why you know so why this come into the picture when there is a rpo rto whatever data loss something that we have right why the quorum came into the picture here right so what is quorum so quorum is in general terminology general general english terminology quorum is nothing but a majority right for example you know you might have heard right like if you go to any assembly or parliament wherever it is so you heard like quorum majority quorum uh, like one party uh, won the quorum or one party uh, won uh, like you know so won the majority kind of thing right so the same thing for example i have three people right three parties you can consider three you know so people or you can consider three uh, servers whatever you can consider this three so we have three so you can consider this as one vote this has one vote it has one vote right so what is this total number of votes are three total number of votes are three total three votes right so total we have three votes the quorum is nothing but the majority that's what i told you. so what do you mean by majority now let's say for example this is gone this you can consider um you know so this has lost the vote right so this is gone like this server or whatever it is it is gone so you still have the majority here majority number of votes that is two and you will form a quorum let's say two parties you can you can consider that uh, you have three people or you have uh, three uh, uh, like a political parties you can consider that and these three political parties or three people voted uh, voting for two political parties let's say for example two vote two political parties right uh, right so if two political parties or you can consider whatever it is and one vote is lost right if one vote is gone then these two forming a majority and form a quorum right so this is called high availability so high availability situation so let's consider these three are three servers right so if we have three servers if one node is one server is down right if one server is down the other two will form a majority and form a quorum so that you were application and database everything will be online because you have a majority number of votes available and it forms a quorum right so we will talk that uh you know so uh, I'll, I'll let you know like when so i'll i'll we'll discuss more like you know so when we talk about uh, high availability features so that you will understand that how this works right so this is the same situation like when one server is down then two other servers will form a majority and it will make sure that the servers are online without any issues right for example these two are down let's say this is only available this two, this is also down let's say this is also down so majority number of votes are down right so majority number of votes are down so if majority number of uh, votes down then this is al alone cannot sustain right so it will be not accessible so this is also down so if this is the case your application will be down and your da your databases will be down and your application will be down and you would not be able to uh so, you know so you're up you you will not be able to process your transactions right so this is the reason quorum is important before we 
you know, so suggest or configure any of the high availability solutions to the customers or application or business or users wherever you go, right? So this is the basic terminologies that before we go with high availability and disaster recovery solution. Let's say understand what are the high availability and disaster recovery solutions that we have. Right. So first, the high availability solution first, what are all, uh, like I'll, I'll note down what are all available here. So first one is failover cluster. Failover cluster. SQL failover cluster. So next one we have log shipping. Next we have. So what what we have? So we have database mirroring. Then we do have always on high available always on right so we have always on availability groups uh, we do have uh, you know so replication in terms of p2p replication so that also can be considered as a high availability uh, solution that we have so but i'm not listing out here uh, mostly you know so replication we use for uh, you know so transactional replication or replicating the tables right i'm not going to discuss that maybe coming videos i will talk more about the replication uh, you know so technologies that we have in sql server here mainly failover clustering log shipping database mirroring always on availability groups backup restore so this is not considered as a high availability uh, or disaster recovery solution but we can you know so get or bring the database online by restoring the databases, right? So that is the reason I would like to discuss this as well. So what are all uh, what are all these, right? Let me show you here. I'll open Notepad. That is simple. Better SQL failover cluster. SQL failover clustering, log shipping, DB mirroring, always on, backup restore method, right? So these are all used to make sure your database is online or bring it online faster or available for application, right? So SQL failover cluster, we, you know, so uh, usually call this as a high availability solution. SA is a SQL failover cluster is a high availability solution. So SQL failover cluster is not considered as a disaster recovery. I will explain that, uh, you know, so maybe uh, later. So here I'll just out, outline what are all high availability technology solutions that we have and what are all that we call it as, right? So this is a high availability. There is no, it is not called as a disaster recovery, but you can configure so high availability and disaster recovery along with log shipping or database mirroring. You can consider whatever it is. SQL FCI, failover cluster instance, you can, cons you can configure log shipping or DB mirroring to maintain high availability and DIA solution, right? So what does it mean? You can configure SQL failover cluster instance with log shipping and database mirroring to maintain a high availability and disaster recovery solution. So I will explain that later. So log shipping, we always consider log shipping as a disaster recovery solution, right? So log shipping is disaster recovery solution. It is not considered as a high availability solution, right? Now, database mirroring, we 
consider database mirroring as a high availability and their solution. The same time, always on, also be considered as a high availability and DR solution. And <laughs> backup and restore, we consider as a DR solution, right? So disaster recovery solution. So we are talking about high availability and disaster recovery, right? What are these two? Right. So what are all these two so that you will understand uh, whatever I was talking about in a better way. Right. Let me let let me explain what is the what are all these two. Now, what is high availability? Let's consider you have two servers. Let's consider a simple term now, simple example. You have two servers. This is these two are connected through a network, whatever it is, right? So high availability. So high availability is something if something goes wrong to here, this server. Let's say, for example, you have SQL, uh, SQL server. I am not talking about the solution here. So I'm just talking about the technologies that we use. OK, so we have two SQL server databases. Right, whatever. Whatever reason this happens, this is down. So if this is down, so immediately without any delay, the database should fail over or should come online here. This is node A. This is node B. Right. So something goes wrong. A is down. So if A is down immediately without any manual intervention or without any uh, delay so it should fail over and come online okay so what i'm what you, you know what i'm talking if a is down if a is down failover should happen failover is nothing but the resources will move from one server to another server Right, the resources we will. Uh, I'll talk more, uh, you know. So, when we when I show you the actual, you know, so the resources you will understand better way. But here you can understand whenever there is a issue at the uh, uh, issue at the one server, immediately failure happens, and these databases are available for application team. Right, for example, this is your application application right so whenever there is an issue at here a node so immediately databases will fail over or whenever whenever there is an issue at that a node and b node is available for application connectivity application usage whatever whatever you know so way that application connects i will talk that later but let's understand if a is down the resources will move from a to b and B is available for application connectivity so that there is no much downtime. So the failout, it takes very few, even seconds or, you know, so a few minutes, right? It will not take longer. This is called high availability. So you are able to fail over without any manual intervention. I mean, you are as in like your application system should be able to fail over without any manual intervention. So when it is, when it can fail over, when it can fail over if we have a majority if you have a majority voting then only if you have a sorry if uh, this also you can consider i'll, I'll mention here in the actual terminology as quorum if you maintain a proper quorum then only this will fail over so you should have a another vote in between or another vote Another vote, anything you can consider that another vote. Vote three, for example, it has vote one. It has vote two, right? So if this is down, 
whatever reason these two will make a quorum make sure that these two are available and if these two are available then your databases will fail over immediately and your application would be able to connect right so don't worry about you know so how this works i will show you uh, how it works but for now understand that high availability is nothing but without any manual intervention the system will fail over automatically and make sure that this is available without any issue for example let's consider that midnight one o'clock 1 a.m something happened right if there is no high availability solution and if it is not failover automatically on its own and and no one is available to monitor from your dba side so no one is available then what will happen to the, your application right so your application is down until and unless someone is verified or until and unless some impact happen right that is a manual intervention that you that know like so to avoid this we have a high availability which make sure your databases online without any manual intervention if there is an issue at the one node one server right that is called high availability let's let's take another example as why disaster recovery right now disaster recovery disaster recovery is node a node b right there is a network connection between and there is no quorum there is no uh, you know so vote here additional vote so i have only these two so i have only these two servers if this is gone if this node is down completely or for example you have another vote something let's say vote three you have let's consider that these two are in a single data center at single lo location you can consider single region or you can consider anywhere and these this complete data center or this complete region is down right so this is complete region is down so if this is the case so now you have only one server available right so this is uh, now we have only one node is available then you will have to bring this online right you will have to bring this node online this is called disaster some disaster happen whereas you lost majority number of votes and you will have to bring the node b or database which is which doesn't have any quorum so which is a single node and you will have to bring the database online to make sure that application is connected as early as possible right so how to perform this dr it depends on the solution you have chosen right so it depends on the solutions that we have so that is where we have these solutions are in place right so if you have this in one of these configured then your life is easy as a dpa so you your application uh, i mean you will have that high availability end or disaster recovery solution based on the solution that you suggest right um cool so uh, that's it like you know so i will continue uh, in next videos to understand each technologies that we have so right so i'll i'll explain high availability why sql failover cluster we consider only the high availability solution right so why log shipping we consider only the dr solution but not high availability right so i will explain more in details to understand maybe i'll cover in you know so next two three uh, series of videos to make sure that you understand the basic concepts right so that's it thank you keep watching so i will post more videos thank you have an nice day bye bye